Hi, this is David, the Udianzo Trading System. Uh, today, I would like to talk about something uh, different. Uh, I would like to talk about uh, an algorithm that I recently implemented as an answer to uh, the current uh, market uh, uh, state uh, of Bitcoin and crypto in general. Uh, since the summer, uh, Bitcoin has been bouncing around 19,000. Uh, doesn't seem to want to move. Uh, so. I finally decided to uh, develop an algorithm that uh, will work on ranges. And uh, more specifically, uh, I started uh, looking at uh, just a 19,000 value uh, to make, uh, uh, let's say, early determination uh, whether uh, how difficult it may be, uh, how useful it can be to make profit from this uh, knowledge. So the first version of the algorithm is one that really um, will naively uh, buy when the price goes below 19,000 and it will sell again when it goes above 19,100. So this is of course based on observed behavior. Uh, why is it round numbers? Because market is basically driven by people or by algorithms that are written by people. So. These are obvious uh, values that uh, seem to do the trick. So this very basic algorithm, uh, it's one that we can quickly test here. I'm running a back test uh, from uh, simulating uh, with market data, uh, Bitcoin market data from July the 1st to the current date, which would be October 27th. And here we can see quite a bit of activity uh, starting from September. So of course, uh, July, I guess, uh, didn't really touch quite 19,000 and then in September started uh, doing so. And we have all these nice trades that uh, will buy as soon as it goes below 19,000 and then it will sell as soon as it goes above uh, 19,100. And the profit is excellent, uh, 20, plus 24% for uh, basically September and October. Maximum drawdown uh, close to 5%. Uh, excellent return over maximum drawdown, sharp ratio, and also win rate uh, very high. Uh, one thing to note, this is uh, even with this very simple algorithm, I put in the stop loss system. So we do have a couple of losses because what happens, uh, even in this case, there are cases in which one will buy below 19,000 but then the market decides to go much lower and uh, we set the risk at uh, 4%. So uh, by the time that the price went lower than 4%, the stop loss kicked in and uh, we actually net a loss instead of a profit. But, you know, it's a couple of losses over uh, uh, 42 positions. That's excellent. Uh, you know, I wish we could do that every day. Of course, uh, once we put, uh, I mean, first of all, this is not very dynamic algorithm and I will go more in detail now how uh, the final algorithm has been developed. And uh, the final algorithm is actually applicable to any price range, any round number, uh, not just in the tens of thousands, also in the thousands, and it will, uh, and it will work with uh, pretty much any market that moves sideways. So, yeah, uh, okay, this was the first implementation. It's exciting. So first step uh, to make a reliable algorithm is uh, two things. We have to determine uh, what's kind of this base uh, price point, uh, which may be intuitive for a human, but you know, once you have to put it into a formula, it becomes a bit more complicated. And then we also have to determine that the market is moving sideways. So the, to determine that the market is moving sideways or not, that's very simple. Uh, we use a simple uh, median average, uh, which is a uh, simple moving average, which is a, a basically a smoothing of the price. And then from there, we can see if the distance between the current price and uh, the average is too far, it could be, I don't know, two, three, four percent. Uh, it's a value to be determined, uh, but it's fairly simple to our code. If it is too wide, then the market is moving with a slope. And if it's moving with a slope, it's obviously uh, not moving in a range. And if, if the average is close enough to the current price, like in this case, then 
uh, it's basically much more likely to move in a range. Uh, very simple. Uh, another thing is, of course, we do have, a, uh, we need to develop a concept of, a, I guess, of a floor. Uh, to do that, uh, there is another a very simple formula that we can apply, which is the minimum value uh, given a certain range. So in this case, I calculate the minimum uh, value that the, uh, that the price are reached uh, in the last, uh, let's say, 28 days, past last four weeks. So uh, on a certain date, we touch certain value, and this is uh, protracted into the future, so to speak, or rather, uh, at the current date, we look 28 days uh, before and we see what's the minimum and that's our minimum. Of course, the minimum is uh, influenced by uh, spikes. So we can see, you know, we're aiming at 19,000. We know that our range is 19,000, but there are cases in which the price really went as low as uh, 18,400. Uh, this is kind of an, an anomaly uh, and we would do want to filter out the anomaly. Uh, one way to filter out uh, spikes would be to use a medium filter. That's very common in uh, image processing. Uh, basically, you take a bunch of uh, observed values and then uh, you sort them and then you pick the one that is uh, in the middle. That's actually not the way I went with uh, for this. Uh, didn't need to. Uh, instead, what I uh, decided to do to kind of get something that is close enough to the to the level, it's uh, the the middle between the minimum and uh, the average. And so if we get the middle, it will be something like this. And it seems to be close enough to, uh, to a range, to the middle of the range that we're interested in. So this was basically an observation. I implemented this. Again, this is this plus this divided by two, and we get kind of something that is uh, close enough. So next step is really we uh, we want to find these nice round numbers. So here uh, it's a bit more numerical explanation. I'm not sure that I can explain really uh, well, but um, I will try. Um, let's see, what do I have source code? It's kind of a, a basic implementation. So basically what we want to do, we want to have, let's say, our 19,200. Uh, first, we want to determine what's, this, uh, what's the scale of it. So in this case, I want to know uh, basically how many, uh, what is the, if we raise to the power of 10, what is the, that value. Um, and we do that uh, by calculating the logarithm uh, base 10. So if I do, let's say I have my my price, 19,300, and then uh, we do the log base 10, we get this 4.28. So uh, it is a fractional number because, uh, of course, it's not 10,000. 10,000 will give us uh, uh, even four. And we're actually interested in the even number because we want to round things up. So to get the even number, we do the floor. And then we get a nice uh, four. So in this case, actually, I want not the 10,000. I want the 1,000. So it's simple enough. I subtract uh, one and I get three instead of four. So now that I and actually, it's better to look at this code because it actually names uh, these values. So here I want, uh, basically, I want kind of want to separate between 19, 19, uh, 19,000, whatever. I want to, to have an even 19,000. And I want to know how many digits uh, I'm working with as kind of a high resolution uh, for which I will need to base my uh, offset to which to sell. Meaning, uh, in this case, when I do the floor of the log of the current price, uh, minus one, this will give me three, and it means that uh, I have these three digits uh, on which to build uh, my offset. So 19,000, 19,100, 100 is three digits. 
So the first uh, formula gives me those extra digits. And the second one, I just raise to power. And so three means 1000. So now I have my nice 1000. So now I want to get to the level and I will use the scale to get to the level. And I will use again the floor, which basically turns a fractional number into the, uh, the closest uh, low integer. And that would be, uh, we can see interactively here. I have my, uh, let's say we call it extra digits. I call, I call these extra digits. And this is price. And again, we have three. Now uh, we need this extra scale, which is basically Ten raised raised to the extra digits, and that would be the thousand. Now I want to calculate the level. Oops, and what I said I will do, I will do level equal the floor of the price divided this extra scale. Actually, this is the, just the first step. And now I have the 19, but actually I want the 19,000. We multiply again by extra scale. And now we have a nice uh, 19,000. And we started from 19,300. So another thing we, we need is this offset, right? We say that for 19,000 or 20,000 or 15,000, uh, we want to work with the hundreds. Why is that? Just because people do that. They see 10,000 and they think 10,100. Um, there's more to say about that, but uh, I will uh, refrain now. But So... Let's say I want the offset. The offset is very simple. Let's say my offset is the extra scale. Uh, is there is a scale divided by 10. So it's extra scale is a thousand divided by 10 is a hundred. So now I have uh, when I have my input price, uh, 18,300, I get one, the level, which is 19,000 and two, the offset, which is 100. Uh, why did I say about, uh, there's more to say about that, because 100, uh, the difference between uh, 10,000 uh, 10, and 10, and 20,000 and 20,100, uh, it is still a difference of 100, but uh, uh, the profit is done as a relationship. So we have to divide uh, 10,100 uh, by 10,000, and then we get how much profit we do if we indeed we buy 10,000 and we sell 10,100, similar with 20,000. But uh, the actual profit is quite different. So people will continue to think in terms of 100s, but the, the amount that you earn from going to uh, 20,000 to 20,100 and uh, 10,000, 10,100 is actually uh, half of it. And we can see, I mean, I won't, I won't say, but uh, there's something about that. Uh, and it's actually uh, relevant to how much profit one can really make, even thinking in these terms, uh, if one works with ranges, as to make sure that, uh, you know, sometimes it may not be uh, worth to work with ranges um, with the offset that is so small. So, um, I mean, yeah, there's more things to talk about because uh, the floor is not quite enough. Uh, you may want to snap it to, if you are, if you are 19,600 or 500, there's a little bit of a behavior to change. So I finally ended up with a formula that it, that is more like this. Basically current price, and then we add the DX scale divided by four. Uh, it's a bit of a bias uh, that makes sense, but uh, I won't explain now, but uh, I want to show uh, just for, uh, for clarity, for uh, completeness. So finally, uh, we do have, uh, I guess, the, the algorithm. And uh, yeah, uh, let's memorize with it. Oops. That's the naive version. 
Now we'll uh, save this for our safekeeping. Now we'll close this and go back to the source code and I will uh, comment out the naive version. And now there's a more complicated version. Actually, this one doesn't need to be here. Just confusion. Confusion. Uh, this is the version we ended up with. This is some extra logic. Uh, this one is the check for the median average to make sure that uh, the difference between the median, uh, not the median average, uh, the simple moving average. So make sure that the difference uh, the, uh, between the uh, simple moving average and the current price is not too much. Uh, otherwise, it means you're in a slope. Uh, this is another custom indicator that uh, we often use to uh, even things out. And this is the function that calculates the level and the offset. And it's uh, up here. It's a bit more complicated. And there is also the additional logic that I mentioned. Uh, if perhaps uh, the relationship between the base level and the base plus offset uh, is too small, that I mentioned, depending on how, the, how big is the number, if it is too small, then perhaps we don't do 100, we do 150 or something. Uh, so we have this, I go here and I finally uh, compile it. Hopefully no errors. So now we're going to uh, test the non-naive version, the complex version, the one that uses the minimum, the SMA, and, uh, and it calculates the price range uh, dynamically. We can go here and now test again for the same price range for uh, Bitcoin. And actually we can do the same at this point also for uh, Ethereum. So now something interesting, if we compare, uh, if we com compare, uh, this was the previous version, the very naive version, and this is the new version. Uh, performance is a bit worse, uh, but that's kind of to be expected. This one is a really dynamic version. Uh, it's, uh, it will work in many other cases. As a matter of fact, uh, we can see that uh, it actually uh, takes a range in August as well. If we go and see, out of curiosity, that this was in August. And there was actually a level at 20,000 and it could uh, capture that as well. See, so it would uh, buy 19,792 uh, and sell uh, 20,117 so on and so forth. So we capture the level in uh, August, we capture the level in uh, uh, September and October. Of course, once we put this online, the <laughs> Bitcoin started to going up and maybe we'll never see 19,000 again, but hopefully we'll get another uh, sideways movement in the, uh, in the near term so that we can actually uh, see uh, live trades with this uh, algorithm. So here uh, with Ethereum, kind of a similar situation in uh, we actually didn't have anything in august it wasn't as flat there wasn't this flat uh, state by the end of august as we did with bitcoin uh, oh, this is part of the it's not part of the test uh, part of the warm-up so we don't consider it and basically it was pretty much end of uh, september and beginning of october we did get uh, you know decent profit, uh, almost 13%, and maximum drawdown very small, 3.74. And again, we can see the ranges here are operating at uh, about uh, you know, 1300. So totally different range, same algorithm, and it works. It will work with any range. Um, we rate also quite good. So yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll see this live. Uh, perhaps there is more detail I could say about the algorithm, but uh, I mean, it will probably start to take hours. Uh, I think it's uh, very valid and uh, 
And um, I should mention also that recently, we uh, previously up to uh, about a month ago, uh, we only had the selected number of algorithms. Uh, as a matter of fact, in August, we only had one short algorithm that was uh, uh, much cause for trouble. But uh, now we have a large amount of algorithms and we have a new system that allows uh, for up to three algorithms uh, along and up to three short to cooperate at the same time. So there's going to be a lot more trades, uh, a lot more uh, dynamic uh, behavior. And in fact, if actually if we see uh, live now the signal maker, if I open uh, Bitcoin, we can see a lot of trades and uh, we can see that the active algorithms, it's uh, one, two, three, four, five. So up, uh, these are short algorithms. We can have up to three, but if they're not performing as well, there will be only one. And we do have uh, the Ranger. We can see here the Ranger algorithm is active and well. And uh, of course, it hasn't done anything in the recent days because uh, we're not in range anymore, but uh, it would have performed uh, well before. And uh, of course, again, uh, because it's a mix of algorithms, the system has continuously have to guess uh, what's the best mix. Uh, with the benefit of hindsight, it would have been nice to just have uh, uh, just a ranger for the past uh, two months. Uh, but you know, uh, we do not uh, we do not have the benefit of a hindsight. So even in this more realistic backtest, we basically have a machine learning system that will, at any given time, uh, use a uh, different mix of algorithm, including the ranger, which is a kind of optimal has been, but uh, including also algorithms that uh, uh, didn't do as good. Uh, but that's pretty much the name of the game. Uh, you kind of have a system that is dynamic and it will try to pick the best algorithm at any given time. And the best that you can do is kind of have, uh, the scheduling and selection of algorithm as good as possible. And, uh, and uh, the algorithms themselves, uh, they should be as good as possible. Uh, that will be it for me. I think it's uh, fairly long, hopefully useful. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, I'm always open. And um, yeah, I guess we're also available if you want to implement your own algorithm and uh, you're interested in uh, uh, working with us, then uh, you know we can find a way for us to implement the stuff into our system. And uh, there is benefit into uh, writing algorithms in our system in C++ uh, rather than uh, putting into TradingView. Um, I won't mention that today, but uh, perhaps I will make another video to talk about all the work forward and uh, uh, validation and, and you know, the, the whole machine learning side of things. Uh, that's enough for me, and uh, until next time, have fun. Thank you.